Hello, welcome to Furious Driving and we're back again with the uh, first of the two monthly instalment things we do where we just chat to the camera. The last one we do is the uh, final Friday live chat on Friday evening. That'll be next week, won't it? Because February is a very short month. This is the uh, Q&A and junk in the trunk episode. So there'll be stuff coming out the boot of the Rover, which needs a really good clean um, very shortly indeed. Now, as you may or may not know, the Q&A section of this video comes from the Patreons and channel members um, of, the, of the channel who sort of obviously help support the channel and make things happen. And they can send in questions to a particular email address and uh, put them to me to, to put to you. So We'll do that bit first. And the second bit of junk in the trunk, there's a PO box in the description below, which you can send any old toot to me and we'll reveal it on this section and give the world a laugh, hopefully. Um, first of all, I want to say a big thanks to Patreons, channel members, and also those people who super chatted during the last live chats. Super chat is when you can sort of send in, send in a beer, basically, send a cup of tea or coffee, effectively, to the channel to, to help kick things over. Uh, on a video not so long ago, my drill died during a shoot. Um, this is now the new Furious drill. Uh, there was a saga with this because I already had a 20, oops, a 20 volt battery system going on here in the garage. So I thought the most cost effective thing to do would be to go and buy a new 20 volt battery drill without the battery and charger, because that is basically half the cost. Uh, unfortunately, it turns out Draper do three separate battery systems, all 20 volt and none of them compatible. So the first one I bought wasn't working with me. So I'd send that back and get another one. But thank you very much indeed to everyone who has uh, been kind enough to throw in a cup of tea's worth over to the channel because that is keeping things going. We've got plans for doing more tool-based activities in the very near future. So, right, first of all, let's kick in with the questions. So I'll do a quick slurp and edit this bit out. Everyone hates the slurping, but I like the tea. Also, if you wanted to help support the channel, head over to the Redbubble links, which are possibly on the cards or in the links below. Grab yourself a Rover mug or a Furious Driving mug or sticker. All helps keep these ridiculous projects going, as I'm sure we'll find out more about in a moment. Now, first question from Frank, Frank Walthius. Uh, which car or car related magazines do I read? And do I know the Readly app? Uh, he's using it over a while and has plenty of international car and other interesting magazines. I am aware of Readly, I don't actually use it. I don't know why, but I really ought to. Um, I think I've got an Amazon Prime membership by accident and I can access magazines through that and I never get around to reading them. Uh, I actually look at quite a lot of variety of magazines. Um, car related anyway um everything from sort of high-end stuff like uh jag rolls royce uh, classic jaguar rolls royce and bentley driver i work for those magazines and so i do read them and that's quite an interesting world that i'm not particularly involved in but it's nice that i'm seeing that kind of stuff i'm quite into hot rodding and things so i read custom car from the uk which i really do enjoy uh, but also i subscribe to hot rod from america and uh, when well, I can pick it up in the UK, occasionally Rodder's Journal and uh, various other ones like that. Um, I do like Octane, classic and sports car. I do pick up classics monthly and practical classics. Um, yeah, it's a mad variety. I sometimes pick up things like uh, the modified mags as well. Practical performance car I'm quite a big fan of because they have a really good attitude to tuning and, and modification. And um, although I'm not particularly a Ford person, I do read Fast Ford as well. That's always quite good fun. Oh, classic American, I read it. I, I, I was actually throwing a lot of magazines away this week. I've inherited a, um, a record player. So I was trying to find some space in my office to put it. Um, and I realised I've got hundreds of magazines where I've got articles from them um, going back years and years I hadn't looked at in decades. So now I've got a record player, which I won't look at for decades instead. So I've, an awful lot of classic Americans I discovered I had. And because um, I used to do an awful lot of work for BMW car and GT Porsche magazines, I have about a metre of each magazine, which I hadn't realised I had quite so many of them. Um, so yeah, that's something I haven't quite committed to throwing away yet, but they're, but they're next to the recycling pile, sort of dwarfing it quite considerably. <laughs> and the Readly app though is really good because you can get access to hundreds of different magazines and things that you would never normally look at, and you can just pick them up as if you're in a doctor's waiting room or a dentist's waiting room, flick through and put it down again. Question from Tim, Tim Price. Quick question. Um, have I been involved in getting parts remanufactured? Some bits with Tomcat and 740 are getting hard to find. Yeah, tell me about it. And he has the same issues with the Saab NG95. Um, that's 2010 to 2011 model. And for his Volvo S70, which I'm surprised cars that new are hard to find parts from. Um, yeah, the Volvo 740, I am really struggling to find blue A and C post trim for that 
on the, I think the driver's side, they've both broken. I cannot find that for love nor money. I have not personally been involved with that at all, um, but I know people in the Tomcat Club in particular who have been, and they are an absolute godsend. Because when you get um, cars which are pretty, well, becoming rare, it's not worth it for commercial manufacturers to go out and start churning out um, repair panels or wings for a car when there's only 50 or 100 of them left. They're never going to make their money back, so the owners' clubs come into play then. And uh, yeah, that's kind of why we need to keep on supporting owners' clubs, because it's all very well having forums on the internet, but without the organisation of an actual club to keep making stuff for us, we're going to sort of run out of bits eventually. Um, it tends not to be the service parts, it tends to, well, sometimes it's like suspension and particular running gear, but oil filters and that kind of stuff tends to be interchangeable with other cars. But body panels, trim pieces, those, those run out first. So yeah, um, and 3D printing though, 3D printing has been a real lifeline and a real innovation. I've, I have actually been searching to find um, a 3D printable end for my windscreen wiper for the headlight on the Volvo. Uh, I've found a couple of possibles, but I haven't printed them yet because I haven't asked my brother who's got a printer nicely enough. I'll email them to you later um, if you're watching. Um, yeah. So yes, I haven't been involved in it, but I'm very grateful to those who have. And if anyone ever wanted to use any of my cars as a, a donor part for for pieces, then I'd be happy to to, to lend a part for for becoming a mould. I did actually buy some police spoilers for this V8 P6, which haven't fitted yet, but uh, I think they were used by the previous owner to make moulds from. So you, there are reproduction police spoilers out. Um, but mine, mine are genuine ones, which are a little bit tatty now, but they can be fixed up and look, made to look new again. Right, next question. Uh, this is from Jaden, who's an Alpha 147 owner. He's having a nice time with an Alpha in that case then. Um, love the channel, keep it up. Hope Mrs. Furious and family are well. Um, they are, I think. Um, two questions. If I could own any Alpha throughout history, classical or modern, what would it be? That's a long list, actually. It's not just one. And what's my opinion of the growing popularity of crossover vehicles? First of all, oh, there are too many alphas. I'll pick a decade and I'll, I'll name you two or three at least. Um, my, my real kind of shortlist though of ones I could potentially realistically own would be a, a GTV from like the 68 through to 72 GTV that I absolutely love. The Julia from the 60s, little square three box thing, that's really pretty. Um, what I would love, I would really like is a Series 3 Alpha 33 Cloverleaf Permanent 4 in red, obviously, um, but they are not common cars. Also a Series 2 permanent for estate, a sport wagon um, 33. Those are cars I would really like. I would actually just like an ordinary just GTV from the 90s. They're starting to get a little bit valuable, but they are rotting out in the same way that my 145 did. Now the 145 was actually one of my kind of ones that I was really looking for. That was my, my target alphas to own, so I'm glad I've got that one, but I would like a GTV of the same era, but they, they rot out as well. If money was less of an object than things like an SZ, you know, the Il Monstro, that'd be cool to have, or an 8C from modern times, that'd be cool. If I was going to go and finance the car and sort of spend a significant amount of money every month, which is something I'm kind of not really willing to do at the moment, um, if ever again possibly, um, I would love a Giulia Quadrifoglio, the current one, but the fact it's £50,000 and an automatic is enough to make me not buy one. <laughs> And the fact I haven't got £50,000. What's my opinion of growing popularity of crossover vehicles? Oh, they were fun when they were a niche and they were kind of a bit unusual. Then they were kind of cool, but now they're everywhere. It's a bit, oh, come on. Make your own joke up. Think of your own idea. Uh, everyone's wearing clown shoes. It's not funny anymore. Um, I am kind of interested in the way that a lot of the current generation of SUVs, and SUVs have become such a problem, sorry, so ubiquitous, um, that even Ford are dropping the Mondeo as a hatchback and turning it into a, an SUV for the next model, which I am really sad about. Um, but I have noticed a lot of things like the Kia Nero, for example, and a few other of the newer SUV type cars have kind of come down a bit in height and the becoming a bit more car-like, so a bit more, if it reduces the number of SUVs that are driving around pointlessly, then I'm in favour of it, but I would, I kind of wish people would just drive ordinary cars because they're better. It's not a novelty if everyone's doing the same thing, is my, my general opinion on that. Next question. Hi Matt, hope you doing well. My question for this month, realistically, can you see any big car shows going on this year, i.e. NEC, for example? I personally think it's going to be a tough year and we've already lost a big classic car show in Scotland that was scheduled for June. Davey, Scottish Car Enthusiast TV. Well, Davey, um, I'm seeing a few shows being sort of penciled in for the summertime, and 
breakfast meats and all sorts for the summer and I'm hopeful maybe some of them will happen but I just don't know I think it's too early to say too early to get my hopes up certainly certainly some of the outdoor ones might do because then people can be distant remote and the outside thing is a factor that may well happen um, especially if there's a the rollout of a vaccine keeps on happening we might be able to get away with it but indoor things like the NEC I don't know it depends what proportion of the population has been vaccinated by by the autumn if they've got the entire adult population vaccinated then yeah potentially NEC could happen but if we're still only down to 50 year olds then I'm not sure how many people are going to be willing to be in a giant kind of swirly melting pot of bacteria for eight or nine hours Hmm. I think that really depends on the vaccination program being successful across the summertime if that happens. I would love it if it did. I've, you know, I've missed that. Like all of, most of you, I imagine, have been missing all the shows and things, meeting, meeting friends, car friends who you only meet because they come from all across the country. You only meet them once or twice a year at shows. Uh, so yeah, if it can happen, that'd be great. But yeah, it comes down to everyone. Everyone go and get your injection if you're offered it. It's, it's not a conspiracy. We're not being sheep. It's a genuinely work, work, worthwhile thing. It won't kill. And there's not microchips in there either. There are six vaccinations in each vial. Uh, can you imagine how accurate someone would have to be to try and get a microchip with a needle? And they're in a hurry. It's not going to happen. And also how tiny it would be. You're already being tracked with your phone anyway. So lay off the conspiracy theories, folks. Now, next question from uh, Mr. N. Rudd. Hello, Nigel. And I hope you are well. And thank you for your continued support of the channel. Um, I think Quentin is a keeper. You secretly wishing to keep this fine automotive icon? And you've got bits of him displayed in your garage. Yep, that's true. Um, how about some performance upgrades? Makes good contents. Uh, finish the suspension and everything. Well, uh, first question, no, not a keeper. Uh, the plan always was to, to get Quentin fixed and move on. I'm not really a convertible person, if I'm perfectly honest. I, I like the look of them. They're nice cars. But I don't really like being in convertibles all that much. I took him out for a drive yesterday, and uh, it, was, it was nice to drive the car. But it was chilly, and it was windy. I, there's a couple of massive puddles, and which are huge fun in a closed car because you can just blatter through them and make big splashes, and it's good, good fun. Uh, in a convertible, you're suddenly very well aware of where the water goes when you blatter through a big puddle. And uh, so, yeah, I'm not really a huge Cabrio fan. <laughs> the car does look nice, and my plan is to make him as absolutely as nice as possible, though. So whoever does take the car on next has got a, a lovely car they can they can enjoy. Um, what's the question? Um, so now I'm going to make the car as nice as possible. Uh, I'm aware the camera may have just moved mid-question at this point. That's because the card just filled up because I was filming on 4K for a video earlier, which is not necessary for standing here. And uh, yeah, just filled an entire 64 gig card. Um, so I've just dropped it down to 1080 and uh, had to run out the garage and empty the card between between sentences. So the question, well, I've just remember where I was now. Uh, any performance I could, um any performance upgrades? Uh, no, because a thing you do notice very quickly when you're driving a car, which was designed to have a roof, which is then had the roof lopped off, is that the performance handling characteristics aren't quite as good as the uh, the tin top version. Um, so you add more power, you just take away the drivability. So I'll, I'll leave it as is. And you know, it, it's not a car that needs to be making a big exhaust sound. It, it, if you try and make more power, it'll just spin it out the wheels. It'll, it won't appreciate it. It won't use it. It would be a waste. I do have those Max Speeding Rods um, coilovers and a box behind the camera right now. Uh, although I have done a bit more reading up since I got them, and I think possibly there are other changes as well as just swapping over the, um, the top plate as I had originally thought. So a, they may wind up on eBay before too long. But no, I'll get everything else sorted out and then come back to that perhaps. Anyway, next question. Hi, Mr. Furious. Enjoy watching getting Quint and the Rover convertible back on the road. How close would you say the Rover V8 is going back onto the road? Very close indeed, actually. Um, I've been looking at that again today. It's just those same things from the end of the video. I've got to work out how the power steering pump fits on. I've got a lot of photos. People have sent in a lot of photos of that, so thanks to everyone who's done that. Work out the alternator, and I've now realised which bit of bracket is missing, so I can figure that one out now. Um, get myself a new dipstick. Um, someone... I was talking to earlier today, thinks he might have one, so that might turn up in the post in a couple of days' time. And yeah, just a couple of odds and sods of that, the exhaust manifold, it's just really odds and sods, and then I can fire the thing up and then just drive it. It's 40 years plus old, so technically I don't even need any MOT on it, but I will go and take it for one. I think you need an MOT for re-registering it with DVLA as a different engine. I think you need an MOT for that. But, you know, it's, it's literally 
days, weeks away, just getting a few more bits in in the post, and potentially we could be driving this thing out of the garage, which should be the first time it's moved under its own power in a long time. But I'm a bit worried how good the tyres are, because they were brand new tyres when the thing was parked, but that was quite a few years ago now. <laughs> Might have dry rotted in the meantime. Next question, that was from Tony, thanks Tony. Uh, next question, hey Matt, uh, question for the Q&A from Gideon. What's the plans for the fleet? What cars are gonna stay, which ones are going? What am I gonna do, um, what cars am I planning to buy as replacement for channel content? Great videos, keep it up, thank you. Um, right, plan for the fleet, well cars that are staying, there's certain ones that are, that are sort of long term, forever, like forever cars, they found their forever home here. Um, the Rover 2000 is that's a keeper for life. Uh, the Mini, um, that's certainly it's one of the few cars I would treat as an investment card. I don't ever treat cars as an investment. I buy them because I like them. But the Mini, I think that one will rise significantly in value. So I'll, I'll hang on to that one a while because I can see that one becoming actually actually worth it financially for once. Uh, the V8 Rover, I'll, I'll see how I go on with that. Got some, I just noticed some overspray from something on the boot. Um, I've always wanted a black V8 Rover and now I'm about to have one on the road at last. Um, so I don't know how long I'll keep this one for. Uh, W123, I've not driven that car yet. See how I like it when I get on with it. Uh, Rover Coupe, I was thinking of, of selling that one, but my, my son, Furious Junior, he says I'm not allowed to sell that one because he wants that to be his first car, which is a, a brave choice for a first car. Um, so that might have to go into deep storage for a while, for about, uh, and quite a number of years. As he's under 10 at the moment. Um, well, W123, I've never driven a W123 yet. I may hate it. I don't know. I may find it so slow that it just winds me up. I might find it's too similar to the Volvo. I might find it's really similar to the Volvo and I like it more than the Volvo. Um, the Volvo was never meant to be one to stick around. That was meant to be a cheap car challenge which involved selling the car at the end. So that was never meant to stay, but we never got to do the challenge. So that needs to have an epic road trip, an adventure, something memorable beyond just just fixing it up. Um, maybe once that's gone, well, sorry, maybe once that's done, I can I can move on and sell that one. I don't know, it's a very nice car. It's a one owner car before I had it, and it's got a full service history. It's a really, really nice car. But, you know, it's not a car I'd ever wanted. It's just a car I just wound up with and just really liked, um, as a lot of my cars are. The Alpha 145, I don't know. I've, I've, again, I've barely used it. It's been the entire two years I've had it being fixed. So maybe I'll get to drive it and then really like that maybe I'll, I'll decide I like the Rover Coupe more than the Alpha 145 um, but it's taken a long time to find the Alpha so I'm not going to sell that in a hurry. Um, Quentin will go soon and we'll get something to replace that. Um, I kind of like odd cars and performance cars and rare cars. Um, I'm very very keen to get a, a Crown Victoria still and maybe maybe I'll just go and um, get some car finance and ship one over this year just to make sure I've got one while it's still petrol and we can still import petrol cars into the UK because although they're talking about obviously the ban on new cars being sold in the UK after 2030, so only nine years away. They haven't been clear about importing cars or not. Obviously cars that are still existing, they can keep on driving, but I don't know whether you can bring in petrol cars after that date. So things like that, I might need to get a move on. I'd like some big American stuff. I'd like some vintage stuff and you know, other projects. It's very much a case of what turns up. Next question. Uh, this is from Phil. Hi Matt, great content on the channel, thank you. We own a Mitsubishi, bought last year on a deal and due to change year after next, just a three year deal. Um, note, wife's car, not mine. With Mitsubishi pulling out of the UK and Europe, um, I'm thinking no to another one. Um, yeah, you might not be able to get another one. If I'm not sure when they're going actually. Um, when we come to change next year due to possibilities of difficulties and parts going forward. Um, yes, I'm not quite sure when they're going. I don't think you need to be too wary because they are an existing company and they're going to keep on existing in other parts of the world so they're going to keep on creating the service parts and panels and that kind of stuff that you need to keep them running and there are existing dealers who are aware they've got a big customer base of, of people who have the cars um, and they're going to want to keep on servicing them so if you've got a regular Mitsubishi dealer I would just have a word with them and say are you going to keep on supporting Mitsubishi cars in the future and if they are then you're, you're perfectly safe if they're going to say no we want nothing more to do with them then look elsewhere for a different car but you know I would, I would think the Mitsubishi dealers are going to keep on wanting to support their existing customers because if they've got cars going back 10 years perhaps uh, they want to connect that's like a significant customer base for those garages, so I think they will continue to try and, try and service them. Don't forget, people run American cars in the UK quite happily that have never been sold in the UK. So I would think you'd probably be okay because they're going to still be making the parts for those cars in 
to sell in other parts of the world, so they will be they will be available. Next one, hi Matt, this is from Adrian Magro. Uh, I'm enjoying the content as naturally I would like to see all the projects on the road, but I would particularly like to see the W one two three on the road. If it were to be on the road today and you were to take it on a long road trip, where would the destination be? Oh, that's a good question. I've not. Hmm. I don't know where I'd take the W one two three. Somewhere. I think Germany, obviously, it's a very German car, but it'd be nice. So maybe go back to to, uh, to Stuttgart to go and see see the factory. And there's a really good Mercedes museum. So it'd be nice to drive to that Mercedes museum in it. But they were very popular as taxis in Africa, Egypt, places like that for a, a long time. They were, there are those famous photos of when they kind of retired the entire taxi fleet not that long ago of mountains of W123s um, all stacked up. Um, so it'd be quite, maybe quite nice to drive down to sort of North Africa because you could get a drive down through Europe, get a ferry across the Mediterranean and uh, t take it for a drive somewhere, somewhere down there. That would be a bit different. Yeah, that would probably quite suit that. Alternatively, just a nice cruise around maybe the Irish coast somewhere, a bit of fun like that because it's a lovely soft riding, easy to drive car. So uh, apparently Northern Irish coast is really nice to drive around and I've never been for a drive. I've been to the Giant's Causeway and it's very, very pretty around there, very nice. But that was for a work trip. So it'd be nice to go there actually in my own time. So yeah, maybe Northern Ireland. Right, just have a quick check, make sure the camera's still rolling. We are. Last question though, got to them pretty quickly tonight. From uh, Steve Cooper, any updates on Quentin? Well, not as such because um, it's been snowing and you don't really do much with a car with no roof in the snow. Um, but I did have, I do, sorry, I did have, I do have it booked in to have the roof fitted in a fortnight. So in two weeks time, we can start seeing lovely red fabric-y material -y stuff, vinyl, I think, going on top of the car so it can stop living underneath a sheet. That'll be a, a nice upgrade for him. And I've been talking to uh, paint shops this week about getting the front end painted as well. So yes, it's gonna start looking very nice very soon. And obviously you may have seen and you may have seen those wheels I bought for it the other day. So, uh, yeah, in the video last week it was, I think. Yeah, so we've got new wheels. So, yes, Quentin is, is getting there. Quentin is progressing. But uh, we're just waiting on professional services at this point. This is why we call this junk in the trunk, because this is the trunk. And this is the junk. Now, someone did say in the week, uh, I'd be a bit offended if I sent something in and you're calling it junk. It's just a joke, don't worry. It's either that or loot in the boot, and loot in the boot makes it sound like I've stolen it. Right, so, let's get a little pocket knife out and do some opening, and I'll be very careful not to show any return addresses. The hammer is unrelated to this segment. So first of all, too, if you're curious about where stuff comes to and from, PO Box 477 Aylesford ME 6 9LE to furious driving and stuff will reach me here. This one, fragile, handle with care, so hopefully no one's broken it along the way. Blue things, tire levers. <laughs> this I imagine is to do with the Sinclair C5. This is from Cornish Rider, aka Jeremy Cornish Rider. I think you're a bike person, aren't you? I couldn't bear to see you struggling with screwdrivers replacing the inner tube on the C5. It's inevitable you'll if you continue, there will be a disaster. So here's a spare set of tire levers. You're welcome to, kind regards, Jeremy. Thank you very much indeed. That is very useful indeed. I was gonna upgrade to spoons, but yes, that is uh, extremely useful. Next time I get a, well, when I get a puncher in them, oh, that will definitely come in handy. That is quite amusing. Right, what we've got next? Let's go for an envelope. Oh, this was an envelope in an envelope. Oh wow, check this out. Practical motorist, well, yeah, April 1959. That is, let's put it down so you can see clearer. That is just amazing. A little Hillman, is that a Husky on the front and a Morris Minor? Inside, 16 page booklet, your car electrical equipment maintenance and repair guide. I'm aware I did flip those words. New three one easy wax means the fastest wax is double rich wax shine for your cars. I guarantee that's not easy. That's gonna be like putting putty on something. Valve springs affect performance. This is how we've whoops, this is how we've changed as motorists and we're no longer buying valve springs. Well we are buying garages and I quite fancy one of these, uh, solving the housing problem for your motor. <laughs> Now that is a cool advert for Zenith carburetors. 
Gosh, it's all adverts. Introducing the Philips easy to fit transistorized car radio. 21 guineas, I think it is. Wow, now that is quite amazing. Does your car have the Philips type screws? Then you need the Stead Screwmasters. Another home garage kit. So it's 1959, you're still kind of in that pre-war self-sufficient period when knocking up a garage in your afternoon is fine whilst you're smoking your St. Bruno in a pipe. Ah, mole grips, when they're a trademark, trademark mole grip name. Are there any articles in this magazine? Which is lots of adverts. Oh, these adverts are amazing. Ah, Davies Extra Grip Remolds. Take your bald tyres and make them ideal for the snow, or, or not. Firestone Town and Country, those would look good on the Hillman Husky actually. Choosing the right second hand car. Well, look how tiny the print is. That's actually quite hard to read. This is a, a massive word count. I, mean, I know writers today complain about having to write like a 1500 word article. There's about 1500 words per page in this. Flexible drives for speedometers and revolution indicators, installation and adjustment. They did far more serious work on their cars back in the old days. Overhauling an Alvis TA14. Wow, this is some serious reading here. Advanced motoring. This is post-apprenticeship level car repairs in an, an amateur magazine. That is quite, quite something. Um, well, that was from Jay. That was from Jay who did the spectrum for me. So thank you, Jay. That is absolutely fantastic. Let's see what else we've got in here. Oops. This one is an envelope. Oh, this is ah, a hangover from Christmas because the Christmas post was delayed quite significantly and so we're still getting Christmas cards. This is to Matt and family. Hope 2021 is far better. Let's hope so. Uh, this is from Richie, Richie T5 on the forums and things, a Volvo person. We may even see Quentin on the road. Well, let's hope so. Well, in fact, we know, in fact, no, so this is how old this card is and how long it took to get here. Um, we actually arrived probably just after the last filming, I think because just after that, Quentin was on the road. We've now seen the MOT. Uh, this one I have torn the top off. Must oil those hinges. Oh, this is, oh, I've got a timmy piece of paper. I'm getting confused in my bits of paper. This is a envelope. Thankfully the address is torn off. Whoa, Alfa Romeo service repair manual, crikey. It says Adobe Acrobat, an Acrobat PDF of the Alfa 145 and 146 repair manual, that is gold dust. Where does that come from? Too much, just wanted to say a big thank you for all that you do, been watching your videos from the past year and, and a half and just enjoyed every single one. Uh, da -da -da. Inspired me to rent out a garage to do the same sort of work. Oh wow, fantastic, well done. He's bought himself an Alpha 145 Cloverleaf. Oh, good man, beautiful car. Bella Mahina. Uh, I've been tirelessly trying to restore, not to mention I've been loving every minute of it. Good, because they are lovely cars, they were definitely worth it. With the purchase of the car, I received a repair manual disc. I've, he's downloaded his PC and no longer need it. Oh, thank you. Jimmy T, thank you, Jimmy. That is fantastic. Because do you, do you know what? You literally cannot get a manual for one of these. In fact, I have found one, which I will mention in the next video. Um, but trying to find a paper copy of a manual for 145, just forget it. it just, just, no, just not going to happen. <laughs> so that is invaluable. Yeah. Haynes never stripped a 145 apart. Oh, right. Let's do a box. Boxes are good. Oh, this is exciting. Bubble wrap and business cards. And business cards are from Total Signage Solutions. Okay, Alex. This is bubbly. Let's see what's in here. Well wrapped. I'm being extra cautious because this, this is this much care have been gone into wrapping it. I'm guessing it might be fragile or il fragile if we're still talking Italian stuff. This is why I unwrap it and it falls on the floor. Unfortunately, Mrs. Furious is no interest in coming on camera and, and passing me things. So I'm on my own here. I've just done another 64 gigabytes of memory just done doing this thing. I'm Alex, I must congratulate you on your wrapping ability. This is extremely thorough. It's something red. Ah ha 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 Alex, thank you. This is the spare, well, this is a used one, but this is a new, old uh, reflector for the back of the Alpha 145. I was joking when I said, uh, is it more Italian stuff? It is more Italian stuff. As you may recall, uh, some so-and-so, 
on the day I got my alpha back from being welded, bumped it in a car park and cracked the rear reflector. And that is a new rear reflector for it. Fablius, fablius, brilliant. I'll put that on in the morning. I'm currently filming it and it's, uh, it's 10 to 10 right now at night. So I won't do that right now. I'll do that in the morning. But thank you, that is awesome. Alex, you are a gentleman. I will very much enjoy having an uncracked, shiny bit on the back of the car. Right, what else have we got in here? Ooh. This is, oh. I'm seeing brochures. We like brochures. Axiom, oh my word, Axiom. <laughs> and Land Rover, well, let's go through all these in a second. Let's read the letter first. Hi Matt, found a few brochures and an old car mag in a drawer. Instead of throwing away, I thought you might find them of interest. They have a family member who only had a bike license. Okay, so that's, what, that's some Adam. Thank you, Adam. Let's see what we got in here. Oh my gosh, it's all three-wheeler stuff. An Axiom, this is that tight, is that battery-powered Axiom? Yeah, these, I don't think you needed a car license to drive these, did you? Be more discerning with an Axiom. Raising the standards of excellence. I think that's hmm, possibly debatable. Well, look at the photos with this. Look how much luggage you can get in one of these things. Reliable, your new Axiom will benefit of 20 years of experience of the European market leader of quadricycles. Now, as I recall, most quadricycles are utterly lethal. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen an Axiom on the road. Oh, this is from a dealer in Bradford. How big is one of these things? It is 2.8 meters long, that's not that big. Well, quite big for a quadricycle. What else have we got here? The Reliant range of hatches, estates, and vans. You know, I actually wouldn't mind a, a Reliant van or something. It'd be quite a daft thing to own. Wow. I should forward these on to Robert in, uh, in America at uh, Aging Wheels, he would love these. Well, Reliant Cars Robin hatchback. Absolutely fantastic. Completely restyled for the millennium. This is 1999. Uh, the new Robin offers greater style and comfort than ever before. That's not necessarily something that's difficult to beat. Oh, wow. Good morning, the one shilling monthly. Well, I've never heard of this magazine. Six continental holidays. Wow. This is, again, a different time entirely. Now, that is a car I would love to own. Although you can tell this is the era of the airbrushed artwork where they elongated and really uh, exaggerated the size of the car. Look how small they've drawn the man and how far over to the, the side of the car they've drawn the woman to make the whole thing look so much bigger and lower and, and sleeker and more impressive than in real life. I mean, it's, it's still a, a good looking car in real life, but they really accentuate it. It was a trick they stole from the Americans. Wow. I've never seen this particular one before. It comes with a Ford Prefect road test. Another episode, if issue, sorry. On Motor Show 1959, that is February 1960. Gosh, what was new in Motor Show 1959? The late 50s, there was a lot of stuff coming out. This is quite a current theme now. A doorbell caravan, seeing as everyone is going holidaying in the UK with caravans at the moment. <laughs> Here's some language which hasn't aged well. The coming out party, the new debutantes of 1960. I'm not quite sure they would word it the same in, uh, in the current issue. The intriguing new Corvair with its air-cooled rear-mounted engine. I wonder if that's going to be any good. And Ford's Falcon is roughly comparable to the English six-cylinder Fords. Two views of the new Hillman mix. Little-known cars below are the uh, 1089cc Skodas from Czechoslovakia. They are good-looking little cars, actually, those Skodas. Gosh, Kit Car Magazine from 1999. The thing about Kit Cars is they haven't really changed much in a long time, so 1999 magazine is virtually still current because they're all still making things that look like the Kitten, which looks like an Avante, and lots of uh, almost Morgans, and almost Austin 7s, and almost, what do you call them, almost Cobras. So the Hawk Le Mans, Hawk Le Mans, even I should say. Ah, this is very much up my street. If, from when Land Rovers were real Land Rovers, this, I guess, is again late 70s, I'd imagine. Today's Land Rovers are stronger, safer, more reliable than ever before. God, they look, they look so wrong when they're shiny and not dented. Actually, those are all S Ridge, so I think it's what, 1978, isn't it? Oh, that's a great, this is a great thing. Thank you. Uh, who was this who sent this to me? Adam, thank you, Adam. 
For a long time, I was a massive Land Rover fan. I was really into Land Rovers in a big way. Um, as they've kind of become a bit more of a fashion statement, I've kind of lost a bit of love for the, the brand. But the, this era of Land Rover, sort of 80s and earlier, I do absolutely love still. Right, let's see what's in a board backed envelope from Paul. Hello, Paul. Thank you for this. <laughs> I like Proton cars. There's a limited number of people who would <laughs> find a home for that. <laughs> Where did you find that from? There are covering notes. Yes, there is. Ah, Matt, some goodies for you. A little something to help you develop. See what I did there? Your photography skills. An invitation from my local Renault dealer and a very lovely Proton hat. That's a hat? Oh my word. Uh, this is Paul, who is actually editor of Rolls-Royce and Bentley Driver magazine. So he's very out of place with his... Uh, Proton stuff here. Where on earth did you find that, Paul? This is... Wow. <laughs> Do I look good in this? Shall I wear this down the shops? <laughs> You're... This is very much uh, statement headgear. You're sure to be a hit with Proton. <laughs> it's hilarious. Let me put that on show somewhere. Oh, that needs, needs to be on display. Oh, wow. A very special invitation, oh, sorry, an invitation to display a very special car, the new Renault 18. Gosh, that was, again, we got all the 1970s stuff today. And little vouchers, test drive vouchers, wow. That is so cool, Renault 18s are lovely cars. Didn't Danny Hopkins from Practical Classics have a green one for a little while? Not so long ago, a year or two ago. Oh, this is 1979. You're, oh, this is your chance to test drive and win one. Do you think I could still enter and win one? That'd be very cool if I could. Motorsport in colour, taking your own pictures, the Kodak way, and it's a rather fetching E-Type Jag. Now, Paul's also been on a classic Jaguar for the last couple of years, so, uh, oh, this is great. Into different, using your camera, different types of camera. Panning, ah, panning is, uh, well, you move the camera like that. What else have we got here? It's demonstrating different shutter speeds and focusing, oh, always quite useful as well. Oh, that is so, that is very fun. Taking the picture. What year is this? Doesn't say. But the cars are mini, this looks like 1960s. Oh, well, it's uh, a certain Mr. Hill, so this must be 1960s, mustn't it? And we've got pictures at night, and there's a cool picture of a Hillman Imp, I think that is. Oh, that is brilliant. Thank you, Paul. I'll have a good read of that later on. That is, uh, that's really quite fun. And the Renault thing, that is, that is awesome. I will actually try and enter that competition. You never know, I might have got myself a Renault 18. Right, what else have we got now? This is an envelope. Uh, this is uh, from uh, Brian. Hello. Hi, Brian. Um, dear sir, first I want to say thanks for your excellent YouTube videos regarding your fleet of classic cars. Thank you very much indeed. Glad you enjoyed them, especially during the COVID lockdown. I have a couple of questions if you don't mind. First thing you can ask, do you have all your cars insured individually on a multi-car policy? It's a weird sort of thing. It, it is one policy, but each car is in, insured individually under that policy, so I can sort of add them and take them off. It's how they like to work it these days, but they're all insured for business use, and it allows me to use a modern car and classic cars for work or for home purposes. There are mileage limitations on there, but I can also drive anything else for business as well, which is useful. So yes, there's classic policies and a new policy in one. It's really unusual to find that. Secondly, regarding your things you sell, like hats, mugs, etc., how do I go about getting hold of these since I don't do any online forums like Twitter and Facebook, etc.? And hope your family are keeping safe and taking care of these trying times. Thank you much indeed, that's very kind of you. Um, that sounds like a set up on a plug, but it genuinely isn't. Um, no, there, there are two ways, basically, that I've uh, done to, to make the things available. Um, there are the hats, which are the, the yellow and the grey ones of these ones, and the plain black ones with the red writing. Um, if you want one of those, there's a little link in the description below. You can send me an email with your pay and PayPal um, to get one of those. Everything else, though, because... Um, these are the only ones I, I print and hold in stock at home. Everything else is done through a company called Redbubble, and there's a link down again in the bottom of the, of the video. Um, if you follow the link to that, then you can get onto the Redbubble store, and you can buy direct from Redbubble, and they, the way they work, it's um, locally printed in whatever country people are in, so people in Australia and America, and as well as the UK and Europe, can buy them, and it's printed somewhere nearby to home, so the shipping is, is less, and uh, makes it more environmentally good. So. Thank you for asking that question. <laughs> that sounds like a setup, but it honestly isn't. Next, what else have we got in here? This one, oh, this is a, uh, a typed one. Don't often get typed things. People generally scrawl things. In my view, is often in crayon. <laughs> I'm joking, obviously. 
Another late Christmas card? No! <laughs> this is a big birthday shout out! <laughs> this is... Hi, this is not my boyfriend, this is uh, Emma's boyfriend. Hi, my boyfriend's a huge fan of yours, it'd be great if you could give him a shout out. He would love it! To Daniel Hemsworth. Hello Daniel, happy birthday! Uh, I don't know, well, she loves you millions, I, I, I'm sure you're a lovely guy. Uh, I, I don't love you millions, I've never met you. Uh, but Emma says she does, and happy birthday. So, is that your Austin 7? No, it must be your Land Rover, I guess there's an Austin 7 at a show somewhere. So, Daniel, happy birthday. I thought we would get another late Christmas card then. Oh, now we have only two more things left. Has come all the way from Australia. So let's hope this has survived into airmail. Crikey, that's uh, done well. This is from Tim. Thank you, Tim, for getting this over to us. Oh, wow, a license plate. Or oh, slightly bent license plate. I think the, uh, the travel has not been kind to it. Wow. I'll have to straighten this out, unless, it's, unless the dents are important. SA, the festival state. Fantastic. This is my dream to have a wall of, of license plates from all around the world. I, I love getting stuff that's made in Australia. It's travelled all the way around the world to this dusty garage here. On the car as well. That's a Mitsubishi. Uh, there we go. Uh, from Tim in Australia. Uh, I heard you mention number plates for your garage. So here I've enclosed a plate from a 1981 Mitsubishi Sigma 2.6 litre 5 speed that I own. Oh, thank you, Tim. That is fantastic. I'll have to be a bit careful and a bit of straightening on this. I think it's here and I can do I can do things um, not not with this hammer, <laughs> with more gentle tools than that and make that look nice. That will find its way onto the wall very shortly indeed and here I'll hold this up to the camera now. This is the 1981 Mitsubishi Sigma which I don't know if you get this in other parts of the world where you may be watching this. That's a cool looking car isn't it? Welcome to Victoria the Garden State. And that says 7th of the 8th, 1988. So that was when the car was relatively new. This is a 1987 on the Stewart Highway, entering or crossing the Tropic of, of, Tropic of Capricorn. Fantastic. And of course that, I'm guessing, that's Sydney Harbour Opera House, oh, Sydney Harbour Opera Bridge. That's a new thing. Sydney, <laughs> Sydney Harbour Bridge. This is in, in 1988 as well. What a fabulous thing. SA, that's uh, South Australia, isn't it? If I remember rightly. That is very cool. So we've now got out of time, <laughs> which is uh, back to the future. We've got uh, Illinois, I think it is over there. Yeah, so if we can get a wall of, of plates from around the world, different states, different countries. I'm pretty happy that the first uh, one we've got is the furthest one possible to get. So that's, that's awesome. That, that will hit the wall of plates imminently. Let's find somewhere to keep these somewhere safe to find like a wall of, uh, of photos people have sent in as well. So this now is the last junk in the trunk item for this month. So let's see what this one actually is. Again, there's an address on this, so I'm gonna be careful. Oh, this is from Tim as well. Oh, thank you, Tim. This is also come from Australia. So again, there is uh, an address on this, so I'm being super careful not to show the address. Um, whoops, a daisy. Oh blimey, this is, hi Matt, uh, I found I had a model of a Mini Cooper, I thought you might like it as it looks similar to the one you have. Put batteries in it, it might not work, put batteries in it, it might work. Also include two articles, or magazines with articles about the P76. Fantastic, let's get this out. So I'm still trying super hard not to show your address on camera. Six AA, ba six AA batteries. Oh my word, yeah, look at that. That is awesome. We need to get this one out of the, um, the packaging, don't we? Tim, this is brilliant. Would you look at that? Oops. It's screwed in somehow. No, it's not screwed in, it's just really tight. Although I've just noticed that on the, uh, on the box it's called, it's not called a Mini, it's called a famous car. <laughs> I love that. We're apparently with a working sat-nav and a transmission. Deluxe Racing Sport, famous car. Oh, check this. Opening doors, oops, spring-loaded opening doors, so they spring shut again, that's really cool. Is it opening bonnet? Uh, no, it's not. But quite a heavily detailed interior, if you can see through the windscreen. 
I'm not convinced with the number plate. Item number, 22338. I'm not sure which number plate that would be, but it's actually pretty well detailed, isn't it? Look, the wheels are pretty accurate. Door handles are really quite good. Oh, I see, it's one of these ones that kind of shoots backwards and forwards. I need to go and find half a dozen AA batteries, then we can have this buzzing around the garage. Put that there for a second and get the magazines out. Okay, this is Auto Safe magazine and Wheels Road Test magazine, uh, which I'm guessing is going to be from the 1970s. City Under Surveillance, check out that computer. And P76 and the ADRs. Let's find the uh, P76 articles. Oh, how do you get? Open that up. Advert for a Volvo 100 or 140. Never mind the, uh, never mind the P76, we've got a Volvo. Oh, even better. Second page, Mercedes 280E. Beautiful. Okay, the ADRs are the Australian design rules. And Leyland's P76, where they were safety testing it, I guess. Yeah, crash testing it. This is 1973. This is really cool. So I need to, I should probably scan this and put this on Facebook or something for you to read at your own leisure, because there's an awful lot of information here. Wow, that is brilliant. Thank you, Tim, that's brilliant. I, I will have to put, I think I'll actually do that. I'll, I'll scan it and stick it on Facebook on the, uh, on the, so people can have a look at that. Giant comparison, the Datsun 80, 180B, 180B is a brilliant car. The Mazda 1600, Toyota Corona and the Tirana 1760. That's a car we didn't get over here. Plus Leyland 76, Monaro GTS4. Oh, this is some awesome stuff here. Check out these road test photos. Did that one, number four, which is a Tirana. That looks like a lot like a Renault to me. Forget anything else. Look at those hubcaps. They are glorious. P76 come to conquer. And this kind of whole front end styling was seen on a lot of the prototype bucks we've, we've got photos of from uh, the post P6 era of when they were trying to replace the P6. And here's the, the opening line for this is brilliant. If Leyland Australia can't sell the new P76 in profitable quantities, there's something wrong with the average new car buyer. It's not the fault of the car. It's you lot not buying it who are at fault. <laughs> that is hilarious. Oh, brilliant. Oh, now to go and find some batteries for this. So not only is my son being uh, entertained with a Sinclair Spectrum, he's now got a giant Mini Cooper to, to make him laugh. Well, this is probably going to stay out here somewhere, I reckon. Find somewhere to... But that, I don't know if you can see that above the Alpha sign, there's actually the front grille of a Mini hanging from the ceiling. Oh, that is brilliant. Thank you very much indeed, everyone who... Had... Oh, I'll close this down. Thank you very much indeed, everyone who sent stuff through this month for junk in the trunk or possibly loot in the boot. Junk in the trunk's got more of a ring to it though. Um, so this is brilliant. I really do appreciate this. And I hope you've all enjoyed being a part of watching it as well as being part of, of sending it in if you were a, a sender. I was the sendee in this situation. Happy birthday to Daniel. And um, yeah, thanks to everyone else. I've really enjoyed this episode. And if you've got anything that might be entertaining for next month, any magazines, number plates from around the world, that's some... Um, trying to cover that entire wall with number plates is an ambition for 2021. We'll see how many countries we can get to, how many states of America, how many states of Australia and parts of Europe we can we can cover in over the next few months. Anything else that looks entertaining might be uh, amusing for other other viewers, that would be great. And oh, thanks for being a part, thanks for watching it, and I'll see you again with other stuff very soon indeed. And Friday this week coming with the last Friday of the month, so we'll do the live chat. I think we're going to do eight o'clock as usual on Friday. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.